hear Peter Roskam, Republican from Illinois, going back and forth with Dr. Charles Blayhouse, who is a trustee of Medicare. Cut five, go. So that cut, just so I'm clear, um, is not a hypothetical cut. It's not a hypothetical delay. It's an actual delay in payment to the point of reaching the 17% number based on your own projection. Is that right? Uh, that's right. I mean, the Social Security Act, uh, which deals with these trust fund issues, is very explicit that uh, payments can only be made from the trust funds. So there's no other flexibility. If, there's, if, if the revenues aren't there, if uh, an insolvency is declared, you have no other remedy but to move forward and make those cuts. Is that right? Right. The, the programs don't have the authority to borrow in excess of the resources provided by the trust funds. And absent some change in the program, your prediction is that that is where our nation will be in 2024. That's right? That's right. With respect to the hospital insurance uh, system. I understand. So um, when the gentleman from Wisconsin said that there's a proposal that's out there by the majority on this committee that ends Medicare, um, in fact, Medicare as we know it, will end in 2024 absent some change in policy or some change in moving forward. That's right, isn't it? Yes. You got that? You got that, everybody? In 13 years, Medicare will stop if nothing's not done now. In 13 years, the money can only come from the trust funds. They cannot borrow. They cannot print. There's no general operating monies. Medicare ceases to exist in 13 years. Where's the president's reform proposal? There is none. Where's Harry Reid's reform proposal? There is none. What did Pelosi recommend when she was speaker? Nothing. 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 There will be no Medicare program, period, in 13 years. Now, let me talk to people who are younger than 55, because under the Paul Ryan plan, if you're younger than 55, you'll get a federal stipend, which you can use with or without your own money, to purchase your own insurance. I heard some caller, maybe to my program, 54, said, I paid in, I want Medicare. You're not going to get it. So grow up. So here's Paul Ryan. He puts out a proposal and says, all right, everybody 55 and older, you're going to be untouched. You don't even have to listen anymore. You don't have to listen. Countries do fail. Societies do collapse. The warning bells are going off everywhere. Everywhere. We have independent credit groups telling us. We have trustees with these programs Actuaries with these programs warning us. It's just so completely out of control. And you know why? Because government is everywhere. Everywhere. Into everything. And you can't tell me what it, it's not in. Have you been reading these stories about the shortages of drugs? Life-saving, critical drugs? Scratch your head. What the hell's going on there? You know, I had a sixth sense about this. I figured it must be the government because... If people need drugs and they can be produced and somebody can, be, can make a profit, well, then they're going to be produced. Why are there shortages? But a little birdie said to me, you know what? Must be government intervention. That's what creates all this dislocation and misery. Then I pick up Bloomberg and my buddy Ramesh Ponaru from National Review. Well, he explains it. More government. Now, most of you will say the government should be involved in regulating food and drugs. Okay, great. But if you have leukemia or, lymph or lymphoma, I wonder if you think that way. The Food and Drug Administration reports the U.S. has shortages of 246 drugs, a record number. Boy, we're breaking the record books all over the place. The Guinness Book of World Records, they can't keep up with this government. Oncologists, that's cancer doctors. And anesthesiologists are increasingly concerned with more than 90% of the latter, that is anesthesiologists, saying they've experienced shortages 
In September 2010, a survey by the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, one in four respondents reported shortages had caused medical errors during the previous year. More alarmingly, one in five reported adverse patient outcomes, you know, like death or severe illnesses. Doctors have had to respond to shortages by submitting drugs, excuse me, by substituting drugs that are not as effective and by making wrenching decisions about which patients get access to which drugs. And the consequences can be dire. I don't know how to pronounce all these drugs, but cytoridine is a drug that is effective in the treatment of leukemia and lymphoma. But it has to be administered quickly. And it's one of the drugs in short supply. Now, what's behind this shortage? Ponero writes, blame a combination of low profit margins and government activism. Organizations... For anesthesiologists, oncologists, pharmacists, they issued a report in November that gently points a finger at the FDA. Several drug shortages, it said, have been precipitated by actual or anticipated action by the FDA as part of the unapproved drugs initiative. That's a plan that largely goes after medicines that were on the market before the before the uh, Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act of 1938 gave the agencies its modern powers. Some participants noted that the cost and complexity of completing a new drug application for those unapproved drugs is a disincentive for entering or maintaining a market presence. The report also cited the the long and unpredictable process of getting the FDA to approve changes in the way medicines are manufactured. Now, more government, more government, more government. Slows it down, obstructs. Got to have perfect safety. And in the meantime, people die because they can't get the drugs they need. The FDA, trying to avoid any more of the tainted drug stories that made headlines several years ago, has stepped up its enforcement of good manufacturing practices, quote-unquote. So in 2009, the agency announced that companies would have only 15 days to respond to official complaints about their practices. In 2010, the government said the failure to adhere to good practices could amount to health care fraud for which corporate officers could be held criminally liable. So, ladies and gentlemen, there are partic- particular drugs that are very toxic. There are particular drugs that have adverse reactions, and yet they're life-saving, they're life-improving. And these companies, I guess, they're deciding, you know, doing this paperwork, and it's not just, you know, filling out a tax form, massive paperwork, doing it in the time frame, exposing us, Drawing our resources away from other things, it's not worth it. Remember, the government doesn't produce anything except hardship. John Goodman, the president of the National Center for Policy Analysis, says these policies deserve a large share of the blame for the shortages. He lays out the indictment on his blog. A drug manufacturer must get approval for how much of a drug it plans to produce, as well as the time frame. If a shortage develops because, say, the FDA shuts down a competitor's plant, A drug manufacturer can't just increase its output of that drug. It has to go through another round of approval. So you have a shortage. they got to go through the process all over again, even though the drug's already been approved. Nor can it alter its timetable production, producing a shortage drug earlier than planned without FDA approval. So let's say they want to have an inventory. They want to have stocks of certain drugs in anticipation of something. They can't do it without approval. You see, what people don't understand is these drug companies, they are regulated through the front door and out the back. The oil companies are regulated through the front door and out the back. The insurance companies, same thing. I know a few areas of what was formerly free enterprise activity that are free anymore. Can you name one? Can you name one? No, you can't. So the government's involved in drugs? That is, prescription drugs, real drugs. The government that's involved in in drugs that try to make you healthier and so forth, well, they're killing people. They're making people sicker. The process goes on and on and on. Even the most common sense, logical things that can be done aren't done because the bureaucrats are involved in CYA.